are rents artificially climbing in those areas because the inventory for long-term rentals is lower because everyone wants to short-term rent it? Yeah. What is that? How does that affect the long-term side and, yeah. and, the, and the inventory for rentals for people who need rentals in those areas? Short-term rentals are exploding. Like everybody's heard of it now. Everybody wants to dip in um, and try it. So certain markets are really becoming saturated. Dallas is feeling saturated. Um, even uh, certain spots in downtown Charlotte is saturated. Um, Nashville, um, most of like, uh, oh, what's that? Tennessee town that everybody goes to near Dollywood. Pigeon uh, Forge. Pigeon Forge is yeah. loaded up. Um, so, so a lot of the destinations are kind of feeling the, um, the crowd from short-term rentals. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm on a, a, a women's short-term rental group on Facebook and everybody's talking about how their bookings are down. Mm -hmm. Um, really since the beginning of October, which they're always a little slower during the winter times anyway, but they're substantially down. Um, and we were really trying to figure out why, you know, what is it that's, um, that's making that difference. And of course, an overabundance is definitely part of it, but, um, you know, are people not traveling as much as they were, they're kind of getting over the feeling of being, you know, barricaded in their homes for so long. If you can get a flight. Yeah. <laughs> Tra traveling's more and more difficult. Um, you know, maybe the government's not giving out all the money they were before, so they don't have the expendable income. Um, so good motivator for people to keep those, uh, you know, those uh, politicians in office. Yeah. You know? Well, we'll vote for you. Just promise us more money. <laughs> Give us more money. Yeah. And then uh, too, a lot of people who were working at home, their offices are opening back up. So maybe they don't have the um, ability to um, travel as much as they did previously. So, so all of that might have something to do with it, but. And you know, one of the, you know, my, cause I don't have an Airbnb brain. It's not my thing. When I, <laughs> when I think about that, like all this oversaturation of Airbnbs, everyone wanting to do it. <clears throat> and then like you said, like Pigeon Forge, then I think about the service industry that are, that's in those places. Mm -hmm. Um, and then most of those people who work in that service industry rent and now are rents artificially climbing in those areas because the inventory for long-term rentals is lower because everyone wants to short-term rent it. Yeah. What is that? How does that affect the long-term side and, yeah. and, the, and the inventory for rentals for people who need rentals in those areas? Well, you can see that uh, Myrtle Beach has been a great example of that for a long time because, you know, the those hot destinations have been doing short-term rentals for a long time. Yeah. So uh, anybody who lives down there, I, I know people that have been investors in those areas and they were specifically looking for off the beaten trail, apartments, condos, small houses that they could buy and rehab and rent to the workers that were there. Yeah. And, and had been doing very, very well until COVID hit and all yeah. those workers were laid off. Yep. And, you know, they ended up either losing their houses or having to rent them long term to different people. So it's kind of starting back up again. But hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when one thing drops off, others will start to fill in. That's, so yeah, it might be artificially raised closer in, to the in beach. Certain, in certain areas, yeah. yeah.